Hello and welcome. This is an audio video excerpt of material from Integrative Medicine and Functional Medicine for Chronic Hypertension. The complete video is available at OptimalHealthResearch.com. The entire functional and integrative medicine approach is detailed in the textbook Integrative Medicine and Functional Medicine for Chronic Hypertension, available from OptimalHealthResearch.com, Amazon.com, and other bookstores. Information sources for this presentation on the integrative management of chronic hypertension includes peer-reviewed research articles from biomedical journals, approximately 350 citations specific to hypertension from a recent review of the literature published in January of 2011. Other sources of information and perspective uh, included in this presentation are, of course, my own uh, training and clinical experiences as a doctor of chiropractic, doctor of naturopathic medicine, and doctor of osteopathic medicine. In the assessment of chronic hypertension in adults, we also want to consider insulin resistance and hyperinsulinemia. Insulin promotes renal retention of sodium, which leads to water retention and the subsequent volume overload and systemic hypertension, which logically follow in sequence. Again, that's from insulin secretion to renal retention of sodium to water retention to volume overload and therefore to hypertension. Elevated or high normal serum insulin along with chronic hyperglycemia is most suggestive of insulin resistance. The most effective treatments for this, of course, are integrative nutritional interventions that we'll cover in a future presentation. Uh, hyperinsulinemia is really an epidemic problem. It's easily correctable with diet and lifestyle interventions and nutritional supplementation. Being able to draw this pathophysiology out for patients who are affected by this differential diagnosis helps promote understanding and compliance. So again, if you can draw this out for patients, that helps them understand what's happening. Uh, each time they eat a uh, food with a high glycemic index and a high glycemic load, and based on that understanding, I think you'll be able to elicit greater compliance among these patients. Um, again, what we're trying to show patients is that when they eat sugary foods, that leads to insulin secretion, that leads to sodium retention and water retention, that leads to volume overload, and when we have more volume in a closed container, then of course that leads to higher pressure, in this case what we refer to as blood pressure. So let's take a look at what that would look like if we drew it out on paper. So sugar consumption uh, leads to insulin secretion. Insulin secretion causes uh, sodium retention in the kidney, that causes water retention and volume overload, and that leads to hypertension. So being able to draw this for patients ultimately can be used to show them how their sugar consumption and poor dietary habits are contributing directly to their hypertension. Patients can also develop a hypertensive syndrome by overconsuming licorice, the botanical medicine uh, Glyceriza glabra. Glyceriza has been safely used for thousands of years, uh, particularly uh, I use it clinically as an antiviral treatment. Uh, one of the active constituents of licorice, uh, glycyrrhizin or glycyrrhizinic acid or glycerotinic acid, can cause a clinically severe hypertension via potentiation of endogenous mineralocorticoids, leading to a syndrome that's referred to as pseudohyperaldosteronism. Often these patients not only have hypertension, but they also have hypokalemia, and this condition completely resolves within a few days of discontinuing, discontinuing the licorice. So licorice, again, as a botanical medicine, has thousands of years of uh, history of use. It's very safe. Uh, very rarely when patients take uh, very high levels, certainly beyond a therapeutic level of licorice, then they can develop a hypertensive syndrome. But we don't see that very often. Licorice is very safe. It's appropriate for clinical use. Uh, but rarely we might encounter a patient who's uh, taken too much and developed a hypertensive syndrome. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs uh, in general, such as ibuprofen and naproxen, and also the COX-2 inhibitors, uh, reduce endogenous production of vasodilating prostacyclin and thus cause renal artery constriction. This leads to varying degrees of hypertension via the uh, activation of the renin-angiotensin system. Mercury toxicity is an additional consideration in the differential diagnosis of acute and chronic hypertension. Several case reports have been presented, 
especially in the pediatric literature, of young children who were uh, intoxicated by mercury due to environmental exposure, of course, and then developed a hypertensive syndrome. Mercury impairs catecholamine degradation and can thereby cause a clinical syndrome that includes hypertension, tremor, tachycardia, diaphoresis, and neurocognitive and behavioral changes. Classically included in the differential diagnosis of hypertension is pheochromocytoma. This should be recognized as an exceedingly rare cause of secondary hypertension in contrast to the high frequency with which it is covered in textbooks and licensing board exams. Classic presentation of pheochromocytoma is episodic hypertension, headache, and diaphoresis. Diagnosis is made by uh, assessing for increased 24-hour urinary catecholamines, metanephrines, and VMA, with or without plasma-free metanephrines. Abnormalities on these tests might be followed by CT or MRI to localize the uh, secreting neuroendocrine tumor, which of course is what pheochromocytoma is. Treatment is surgical excision of the adrenal or extra adrenal mass. Hello and welcome. This is an audio video excerpt of material from integrative medicine and functional medicine for chronic hypertension. The complete video is available at optimalhealthresearch.com. The entire functional and integrative medicine approach is detailed in the textbook Integrative Medicine and Functional Medicine for Chronic Hypertension, available from OptimalHealthResearch.com, Amazon.com, and other bookstores.